Hey, welcome back everyone. Have you ever been faced with trying to create a process model with everything your organization does? In some instances, I've been in organizations new with BPMN and we've been asked to do that. Generally, we're not able to create a process model with every task, gateway, date object, sequence flow, etc. It would just be a colossal diagram that wraps around the room and be impossible to follow, especially for those organizations with complex business models. Luckily for us, BPMN has a notation that lets us expand or hide process details, and that's the sub-process notation. And that's the purpose of today's video is to describe the sub-process, how you can apply it, and then and, and essentially give an example of our DevOps process or DevOps sub-processes. But first, let's cover the basics. Generally, we use two types of activities in process modeling. Not generally, always. Um, we use the task and we use the sub-process. Um, the task is used when the work of the process cannot be broken down in, into any finer level of details. If you watched any of my other videos, most of the videos I use focus on those different task types at the atomic level of detail to describe what's going on in the process model. In contrast, the collapse of process indicated with the plus sign here illustrates that a process is decomposed into a finer level of details. Really what this means is that the sub-processes can be used by you and your teams to represent an abstract of many of those tasks, sequence flows, events, etc. in your process. And for the purpose of this video, I'll focus on the collapse sub-process. By using the collapse sub-process notation, we can hide those flow level, you know, the flow details in our process, and we're able to create strategic, operational, or tactical level process models of our organization's business model. I'm going to switch over to our DevOps collapse of processes um, and to really talk about and illustrate how the process flow goes from the parent process into a sub process. But first, here are some characteristics that may be useful to you when learning sub-process. As I mentioned before, a sub-process um, is indicated, a collapse sub-process is indicated with the plus sign. You'll see all my uh, sub-processes here for our DevOps um, are a collection of sub-processes. If we click and drill down into our sub-process, the next rule that you'll see is that only non-start events will be used or can be used in your sub-process. And that's because the when the parent process triggers a sub-process, meaning, I'll go back here, when the sequence flow I'm using the token here to represent just notionally or theoretically the flow of the process. But when that token, when the sequence flow, that boundary hits build process, by using the non-start event, it'll automatically trigger that sub-process. And then lastly, uh, another good rule here is that the collapse sub-process hides those process details. Like I mentioned, sequence flows, activities, events, data, and gateway. So if I drill down into here, obviously I don't have any data showing, but I have everything else, um, these process details that are that's a part of the build process. But before I talk about this, I'll, let me just take a step back um, to discuss our DevOps um, sub-process here and DevOps in general. You know, for those that are new to DevOps, you know, it's really a cultural mindset that is focused on delivering speed and continuous improvement. People across multiple domains and practices must work together to provide business value by delivering software to a business function. And so for today, I thought we would focus on our very simplistic DevOps process. One note for those learners watching this video, this model and explanation is part of a series that build upon each other in our upcoming publication, Learning BPMN 2.0, the second edition, 
an introduction of engineering practices for software delivery teams. And so let's get back to the collapse of process notation that describes our top level DevOps process. In this view, we have our uh, sub processes, uh, plan, develop, build, test, package, deploy, and monitor. The, these are all our main sub processes for our DevOps. Suppose we would click on our build process what would be revealed, like I mentioned before, are those process details. So as we go through our parent process here, when the sequence flow reaches the build process, let's drill down in here as an example. What we'll see is our, pro our process essentially beginning um, with code developed, that trigger um, being triggered by the parent process. And what we'll see is the, um, the token go to the first activity, which is commit development uh, repository. Um, and so once that occurs, that activity occurs, um, we go through a series of activities for our build process, um, leading into the trigger build process. And what you'll notice is we have a, a, an exclusive gateway used here. And what's going to happen is based on the results of our trigger build process, we either failed or had a successful build process. Since this is an introduction video, let's keep it simple and say our build process was successful. Because as developers, we never have failed build processes. Insert sarcasm. But once it's successful, then we can merge the branch to master um, and complete our activity. What's important to note here is once this, uh, once the token reaches the end event, what's going to happen in the parent process, stop this and go back, what, what's gonna happen is that th then the sequence flow, the token would trans, um, transfer to the next activity and we would go through those sets of um, tasks. So a question for you all. Does your DevOps build process look different than ours? I'd be curious to know, um, as, as learners and practitioners, we, we see different ways to model this. Um, and while this is the first in a series that describes the DevOps process and specifically our build process, um, I'd be curious to know. So please leave a comment below if um, you've modeled this differently or, or the same. And I just wanna say thanks to everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next one.